it's holiday roast time. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Fogo Life. Today, we're gonna make a holiday roast, but we're not gonna make your typical prime rib. No, 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 we have to mix it up a little bit. I've got this beautiful prime New York strip roast. We're gonna cut it in half, because we're gonna do something else with the other half, and I'm gonna show you how to make the absolute best holiday meal. We're gonna mix it up with some different sauces, some different jus, and it's gonna be fantastic. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open this baby up because I want you to see all of this beautiful marbling inside of this incredible, incredible roast. Now to take this baby out of here, you know, a lot of people ask me a lot of times like, hey, uh, you know, how do you know what meats to buy? How do you know which ones to shop for when you're in the store? Well, I'll tell you, what I like to look for is I like to look for the package of meat that has the least amount of juices showing in it, all right? So when I look at that package and I hold it up, I don't want to see the whole entire bottom all filled with juices. I want to pick out pretty much the driest one that there is. The reason being is that means all that juice is still inside the meat. As a matter of fact, look here. Out of that whole entire 15-pound New York strip roast, this is all the liquids that's in there. That's it. Almost nothing, okay? You can see. That means that all those juices are still inside the meat. You know where that's gonna be? Inside my belly, right where we like it. It's not blood, I promise you. It's red on purpose, but it's not blood, okay? Don't worry. First step in our process is we're gonna pat this thing dry. We wanna get all the extra moisture off of it. Now, when you're working with meat like this, you wanna use some nice gloves for food safety, okay? It's very important. Psst, they're available on our website. Don't tell anybody. But yeah, we pat the whole thing dry. Top, bottom, sides, everything. Get it nice and dry. Now, we're gonna cut this baby in half, because like I said, we're only gonna cook half of it, but that's not a knife. That's a knife. That's what we're gonna use, this nice brisket slicer. You work with your knife that's according to the size of the piece of meat that you're working with. All right, so we'll just cut this sucker right in half. And look at that, look at that beautiful marbling. That is what's known as gorgeous. This half, we're going to cook today, but this half, we're gonna save for another experiment that you're gonna get the benefit of seeing later. I won't tell you what it is yet, and I know that my humor is a little dry, <laughs> and it's only because I've aged a couple of years. You catching on? But, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this one, wrap it up real tight in some plastic, about 132 layers, and throw it right back in the fridge for right now till I'm ready to work with it. Okay, so I know you're probably going, wait a second, that's not prime rib, we want prime rib. Trust me, this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Listen, it's something a little different. Everybody in the world's gonna serve prime rib. Try something a little different for a change. Mix it up, have some fun. So a New York strip roast is a way to go. Again, it's a prime New York strip roast. Now, one of the things, okay, it comes with this nice fat cap on here. We don't want to get rid of this whole fat cap. You wanna trim off any excess, okay? But what you wanna do is you wanna just trim the excess stuff, get, the, get it nice and trimmed down, let it nice and shaped beautifully. And that's it, you don't wanna take this off, you want this, it's gonna, you gotta have this fat. Fat equals, that's right, flavor. You're right, you're smart. This is pretty cool stuff here. This is Wagyu tallow. All that's in this container is Wagyu beef fat that has been rendered down to like an oil consistency. So, you want extra beefy flavor? This is the stuff for you. So, we're gonna go ahead and just pour a little bit on. Don't need a lot. Okay, because we're gonna coat this whole thing in here. Now, all we're gonna do is take this and rub it all over this entire roast. Now, this is the fun part. Don't need a lot, we just want a thin layer, just enough for the, for the um, rub to stick to. Whatever season you're using, hopefully you're gonna use the same one we are, because it's delicious. But there, now you've got fat-covered beef roast. And our next step, we are going to apply some seasoning to here. So whatever one you wanna use is great. I'm gonna use this. We sell it on our website, there's a link down below. It's Tina Cannon's European Blend. It's absolutely delicious combination of flavors. So we're just gonna open her up and sprinkle her on. Okay, now our next step is gonna be to light the grill and get it up to temperature. Hey Ron, why did you season that before you um, lit the grill. The reason being, we're gonna let this sit for a half hour, 45 minutes, let all those juices come up out of the meat, grab the seasonings and pull that flavor back down into the meat. We're gonna have a much more flavorful piece of meat. Season it, salt it, let it sit for about a half hour, 45 minutes before going on the grill. Now, the first thing we're gonna do before we light the grill, that's before, we're gonna be cooking indirect, which you already know what that means. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the convector or the deflector, whatever you wanna call it, in aluminum foil. It's gonna keep it nice and clean and it's gonna keep the oils from penetrating into it. Tight there, nice and tight. Now you'll notice that I did that before lighting the grill. The reason being is with this expander basket, while it's nice and cool, we covered it up so we don't burn our hands. The expander basket gives us these handy dandy handles to move everything around super easily. Jordan! And for today's low and slow cook, we're gonna be using our super premium yellow bag charcoal with the easy open string. <laughs> it really does work. Anyway. Super premium, great for low and slow cooking, much larger chunks than what you're ever gonna see anywhere else. Now, while the grill is heating up, I'm gonna show you something a little extra, a little added bonus that we're gonna do for you. We have this cool little thing called a bricknik. It's a ceramic coated uh, clay pot, really, for all intents and purposes. We're gonna make what I like to refer to as confit potatoes. Now, confit is normally something cooked in and slowly in duck fat, not us. We're beef, man, I'm all about beef today. We're gonna use Wagyu fat, so all we do, Take some like cherry sized tomatoes, I like a little bit larger than cherry. And we're gonna use that same Wagyu tallow and pour it all over it, let it cook in that. In addition to the tomatoes, we got a couple of herbs out of my garden. I got some fresh, fresh rosemary and some beautiful Italian oregano. Ah, it smells so good. I had to do it twice. So we're just gonna throw this right on top and let this cook right alongside the tomatoes. All right, now people are always asking me, what's the best way to monitor my temperatures? I like to use the meter thermometer. It's wireless and it's Bluetooth, okay? And you can set it right to go with your phone here. I'll show you that in one second. What I like to do, measure about halfway down. It measures the temperature in the tip. So you measure about halfway down, and when you insert it, insert it that far. This way you know your tip is right in the center of the meat. Now to set it up on the phone is real simple. You just go to the meter app, tap to set up cook. I wanna cook beef. I wanna cook a roast. We're gonna, we're gonna mark it as a rib roast, even though there's no rib in it. But we're, gonna, we're only gonna want this to go to about 120 degrees today. So we're gonna hit it there, and we hit start cook. And boom, it's all there. It tells us our internal temperature, the target we're shooting for, and what the temperature is in the grill. Good news, the grill is heating up. The meat is all seasoned up. What to do now? Well, I'm gonna show you something cool. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to serve this beautiful beast of a roast. One is gonna be roast beef style. So. We'll make a nice au jus to go with that. All we're gonna do is take some beef broth and just pour it into this drip and griddle pan here. This pan is awesome, especially if you wanna make gravies, you wanna make some kind of liquid to have your meat to dip in at the end, this pan is what you want. Now, the reason that we put this in the bottom first, if I was doing it in an oven, I might not do this, just let the drippings drip into the pan, but I don't want this stuff to burn off. I wanna get all of that stuff and I don't wanna get burnt flavor. So what's gonna happen now is all those drippings are gonna come right down from the meat right into that juices, and it's gonna be there, and it's gonna all combine for an awesome, awesome au jus at the end. Au jus, God bless you. We are cooking at 250 degrees today, two, five, zero. So it's there, and we are ready to go on. So we're gonna put our dripping griddle pan with our beautiful roast right in there. And while the roast is roasting, we're gonna cook our cone feet style tomatoes right next to it in the brick neck. Now, I told you I was gonna show you how to serve this two separate ways, two ways, that's right. So the first one is gonna be in that au jus. The second one is we're gonna serve it like a prime rib. So whether you're making your New York strip roast, whether you're making prime rib, this is an awesome horseradish cream sauce. It is phenomenal. I've had a bunch of recipes. This one, I like it because it's simple and it is absolutely taste bud tingling delicious. So let's get right to work and show you what we're gonna do. One half cup sour cream, two tablespoons prepared horseradish, drained of course, two tablespoons of mayonnaise, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, and one tablespoon of finely chopped chives. And that should be perfect. That's perfect. And while, <laughs> while the meat's cooking, we're gonna take our horseradish sauce and put it inside in the refrigerator. You know the drill. To the refrigerator! All right, kids, we are there. We are at 120 degrees. I actually went a couple degrees over. He didn't want me to tell you that, but I did. <laughs> but look at that. Is that gorgeous? Now, I'm looking at it, and there's one thing I've noticed, is that it does not have as dark a crust on it as I was like. If this was a whole roast, it would have taken longer and probably got a little better crust on it. But even though I said I wasn't gonna sear it before, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and go direct for a minute with it and just sear the outsides of it. So let's get it ready for some searing action. 
All right, so I'm just gonna put the grate back on here. We're gonna let this build for just a couple minutes, get a nice hot fire going. We're just gonna drop it on there, probably about a minute to a minute and a half per side. Just get a nice little char on it. That's what I want, that charred flavor. Mmm, can't beat a good sear. So I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. My once every two years that I get to use these things, I'm gonna use this because I don't wanna ruin this crust with tongs. So I'm just gonna take it off here. You don't wanna poke it, all right? You don't wanna go deep. We're not looking to make holes in the meat here. But what we wanna do is just set it right on there. You can hear I got that grate nice and hot. Look at that, it's just searing. So we're gonna give that about a minute. And that was one minute. So we're just gonna flip her over. Oh yeah, look at that color. That's way better. That's more like what we're looking for. Well, we've got a pretty nice fire going, so you can see that fat cap was there, so we're gonna pull it off. Woo! Man, is that hot, is that gorgeous? Oh, that's exactly what we wanted. And now that she's done, we're gonna let her rest for about 15 minutes. So we're just gonna let her sit here. I'm not even gonna tent it. It's got plenty of temperature already. You can see that smoke is billowing from the egg, but this is absolutely gorgeous. I wanted this nice crust on here. It is just perfect. It's gonna have so much flavor. I cannot wait to dig into this and share it with you. Now, we've got our beautiful au jus here, but you can see there's kind of chunks of fatty and gross stuff in here. You can kind of scoop some of that stuff out. You don't have to put that in there. Just get rid of it, okay? Now for the test, let's see how we did. Oh, it's tender. Oh, I think we did okay here, folks. Ready for the big reveal? Oh, look at that. I told you I was gonna show you a couple different ways to serve this. The first piece that we cut, you can cut that into two steaks, all right? Just cut it like that into two steaks. You want about one inch thick to serve like a prime rib. It's perfect. We got the gorgeous au jus. I'll show you that again. But now, the other way you can serve it is like a roast beef. I love roast beef dinner. Now check this out. Now that looks awesome, but we can't forget about the tomatoes. looks better than I could have even hoped for. This is a holiday meal for a king and queen and their family and their court and the jesters and everybody. I can't believe how beautiful this turned out. And I gotta tell you, I've tasted it all. It tastes absolutely amazing. But if you don't believe me, let me go ahead and show you. Cut a little piece of the roast beef here. Those tomatoes are insanely good. Let's drop a little salt on them. That roast beef, it doesn't even need the jus. It's so juicy by itself. Got beautiful pink, oh my God. <laughs> I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. God, so good, so good. But it wouldn't be complete if we didn't try the prime rib too. Now, I know it's not prime rib. It's New York strip. Guess what? It's got a lot of flavor. This is just awesome stuff. So I'm gonna cut a piece of that right there. I mean, is that just gorgeous pink? Got a gorgeous crust on the outside. I think we made a really good decision by searing it. So take a little bit of the horseradish sauce there. Oh man, you can't beat that. Mmm, that's just amazing. That is just amazing. That horseradish sauce, I'm gonna, I put, I'm gonna, all, all this stuff is, um, the instructions, the recipe, everything is down below in the description. Make sure you make that sauce too. The horseradish sauce is outstanding. Just the right amount of bite. But the New York strip prime rib, I'm telling you, I may not make a regular prime rib anymore. It's that good. I mean, it is really that good. So, you know, this is kind of what I serve at Egg Fest when I cook. I cook a whole roast, cut it into steaks, then we season the inside of it after we cut it and throw it right on the coals for a sear. Makes a little show, but this was outstanding. That searing it at the end was a great idea. It just goes to show you, sometimes you have to adapt, okay? So we weren't planning on searing it. When I saw it at the end, I knew it needed that sear, and I'm so glad that we did. So when you're cooking, don't be afraid to change your plans midway as it goes. If something doesn't come the way you want it, make it the way you want it. That's the beauty of it, okay? So this is the perfect holiday meal to me. Like tomatoes, just drop a little salt on those, outstanding. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. I really enjoyed making it. I'm really gonna enjoy eating it. But um, you can stick a fork in me because I'm done. So remember to subscribe to our channel, okay? I hope that you and your family have the greatest holiday season, whatever holidays you celebrate, okay? Enjoy it. Leave me, leave me a comment below. I'd love to know what holiday you're celebrating. 
In any case, until then, remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.